Hello and welcome to High Five 2021. I'm very pleased to be in your company and uh, vice versa. I trust that this few moments that we spend together will be a very meaningful one. High Five has been brought to you by Missions Tabernacle of William and Water Lane Streets in Princess Town, Trinidad, West Indies. The lead pastors there are Noelling and Annecy McIntosh. As a ministry, we would certainly love to hear from you. Please take the time to subscribe or give us a like and a comment. And also do let us know from which platform are you viewing this video cast and where in God's green earth are you looking at this video cast today? The topic that I want to speak to you about is how to walk in good health and prosperity in 2021. How to walk in good health and prosperity in 2021. I don't know whether you ever heard this old saying that your health is your wealth. Your health is your wealth. This gives large meaning to our life as health is considered the most valuable, most valuable and precious commodity for every individual. If you don't have good health, your wealth is of no value whatsoever. Good health means not only the absence of sickness and disease from your body, but good health means mental, social, as well as spiritual well-being, that you will be totally in good health. In the Gospel, or the, rather the Epistle of Third John, and the second verse, it was the Apostle John who wrote these words, and it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou, thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. I like the way that the message, which is a contemporary paraphrase edition of the Bible, puts this text to read, and it says, quote, To my good friend Gaius, how I truly love you. We are best of friends, and I pray for good fortune in everything that you do, and for good health, that your everyday affairs prosper as well as your soul. End of quote. Dear viewers, from the very outset, outstart of this program, let me tell you, it is God's will that you be healthy and wealthy all the days of your life. God has not brought us into a spiritual condition of ill health or poverty. But it is good to know that it is God's will that you be healthy and wealthy in 2021. And if you have been unwell and sick in your body over the past days or weeks or months, and you are clamoring for good health, you have been visiting doctors and clinics, and uh, there seem to be little or no avail. And maybe you have resigned yourself to the thought, maybe it is God's will for me to be sick. I want you to remove that roadblock from your mind because it is not God's will. And I would like to validate my statement by reading a portion of scripture from the Gospel of St. Luke. And this tells us about a man who was very sick and he needed healing, but he had an incredible roadblock to his healing and deliverance. And I trust as I relate this text to you, it might help you to clear up your own roadblock. And at the end of this program, or very shortly during this week or during this month, you will have a new experience of good health and good fortune upon your life. This story of this man who was critically ill has been recorded by three recording evangelists 
Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'd like to read the Luke account of this story and reading from Luke, the fifth chapter, and a few verses beginning at verse number 12, and it says, And behold, it came to pass that there was a certain city, there was a man in a certain city, and behold, he was full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand, that is, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, immediately, the leprosy departed from this man. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for the, your cleansing according to the law of Moses for all that he has commanded as a testimony unto them. End of reading this text. Now here is a true account of a man who was diseased. He was a diseased man. The Bible tells us that he was a leper, but not only a leper, he was full of leprosy. His leprosy was at an advanced stage in his life. So it seems as though he was beyond hope. But not only he was a diseased man, the Bible tells us that he was a marginalized man because of his leprosy. He was a social outcast. Lepers at that time lived in confined communities and they were forbidden to intermingle with normal people. They they were not allowed to touch, or you were not allowed to touch them, for if you made any contact with them, you were rendered unclean. So even at that time, there was some measure of social distancing. This man was economically impoverished, because the state of this man tells us he had absolutely nothing except the clothes that he wore on his back. He was emotionally and socially and completely cut off from normal people. I don't think that's a good feeling and anything that anybody wants to experience apart from the dreaded disease and sickness and pains you may be carrying in your body. You don't want to be cut off from the care and the contact of good people. And it seems that this man, knowing his condition, broke out of all the confinement, social and otherwise, in order to get the, con the attention of Jesus. And if you desperately need to be delivered from your disease and sickness, you have to tell yourself, this is as far as I can go with all the medical science and everything that they are provided clinically and otherwise. I have to trust the Lord for my healing. I have to trust the Lord for my good health, for healing is of the Lord. Medical science may make you feel better for a little while, but ultimately it is God who heals. He says, I am the Lord who healed thee. But this man, he wanted to be better and he broke all the protocols, being a leper, to come out in the open and to get the attention of our Lord Jesus. But having done that, there was this incredible roadblock in his mind. And sometimes, while we may have social and religious roadblock, the worst could be the roadblocks that we set up in our own minds. And we read in verse 12 that this text tells us, seeing Jesus, he fell on his face and he besought Jesus saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. Notice, if thou will. As a matter of fact, he didn't know whether it was God's will for him to be sick, to remain a leper and die a leper and die a socially outcast man, or it was God's will to bring healing and restoration to him. You see, my dear viewers, his roadblock was not 
in the ability and power of Jesus. All power in heaven and earth is given to our Lord Jesus Christ. And he acknowledged that, that if this anything can be done whatsoever, it was Jesus to do it for him. And I believe to some extent you too believe that if you have to get out of your dilemma, your sickness, your prolonged illness, it is Jesus to break that vicious cycle upon your life. So it wasn't in his mind that Jesus was unable to deliver him and heal him from his sickness. Neither his problem was on submission. For this man, I don't know what religion he came from, but he fell down at the feet of Jesus and he called him Lord. He recognized deity in our Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus had power over Satan, sin, and sickness. His problem was, Lord Jesus, is it your will to heal me? Now, it is sad to know that many think it is God's will that they remain sick and disease. Um, and others think that they are sick and diseased because of something incredibly wrong that they have done and they might be paying for their sins or the sins of their parents has fallen in them. So this man was ignorant about God's will for his life in terms of of his healing and deliverance, not in terms of religion. There are some people who say they would stick to their religion, but religion cannot do anything for you. This man realized it was Jesus who can step out and touch him, who was a socially displaced man. He might have thought that he was not good enough. He was not good enough to receive healing in his body because healing was touted as the children's bread. And he believed that God will not give him the children's bread because he was not good enough. In the Old Testament, there was a man who was a leper, but he was a socialite. He was in the upper crust of society. And the Bible tells us that he heard about a man, a prophet of God, by the name of Elisha, who can heal him of his leprosy. So the text tells us there in the Old Testament that this man came with his mules and his donkeys and his servants laden with gifts in order to appease the man of God so he may beseech the God of the Jews to heal him from his leprosy. But you and I who have read the story know that it didn't happen this way. This man in the text that we have read, he could not have done this. This was a different situation. This man could not have afforded this. But instead, you look at the drama of the situation. This man, full of leprosy, beseeching our Lord, asking him whether it is God's will or whether he would heal him or not. And in order to end all the argument or discussion, Jesus simply reached out and touched this man. Isn't that incredible? Jesus made a conscious decision to touch this man. And I want to tell you why this is so important. Now, Jesus didn't have to heal this man by touching him. Because if you read the other instances in the Bible or in the gospel, you would read where the paralytic were born by his four friends, was let down before Jesus. And Jesus didn't have to touch him. He said, get up and take your bed and walk. There is power in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then there was a soldier, a centurion servant was in charge uh, of a hundred soldiers. He was a military man, a strong, well-trained man in strategies of warfare. And he besought the Lord, like this leper, that he should come and heal his servant who was critically ill. And when Jesus had so decided to go with him and bring healing to his servant, he said, Lord, 
Stop, wait a moment. You don't have to go under my roof. You speak the word and my servant would be healed. For I too am a man of authority. I say one go and he goeth and to another come and he comes. And I recognize your authority. Just speak the word and your servant shall be healed. And the point is that you don't have to have the physical presence of Jesus where you are. If you can believe all things are possible. All things are possible because he is the Christ of yesterday, today and forever. Jesus touched this man and he made him well. Now, what was Jesus' real concern as we read this text? I believe our Lord's real concern was to bring this disfranchised man back into the community from which he was marginalized. To bring the man back into the community who has been economically and socially and emotionally cut off and to become one of the regular people again. It is bad when you are sick, but it is worse when people despise you and shun you and scorn you because of your sickness. Our Lord Jesus can fix that for you. Some of you have cried yourself to sleep on many occasions, not so much because of the disease and the pain, but because of the social implications. People who were once your friends are no longer socializing with you. They somehow scorn you and distance themselves with you. I believe it is the will of God to heal and restore you. Jesus' concern was to make this nobody a somebody. That was his concern. So, our Lord Jesus, when he touched this man, I would like for you to notice, he didn't jump back and said, whoops, I made a mistake by touching you who is leprous, I am now unclean. Jesus never said that. Jesus said, you cannot make me unclean. Your leprosy cannot make me unclean. What Jesus was also saying by touching this man is I am your cleanliness. I am Mr. Clean. I am cleanliness. By just touching this man, Jesus was conveying this to this man. And he was saying, no matter how defiled you are, no matter how stained you might be in life, no matter how tainted you are, no matter who or what you have done wrong, and no matter how much wrong you have done or how far you have fallen into the depths of sin, and no matter what your records might have been in the past, I am the Lord who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ever ask or think. The moment I touch you, and I, Jesus is saying, and I'm paraphrasing this, you will be fit for the presence of God. The same people who have rejected you, they would see a dramatic change in your life. And the Lord says, the moment I touch you, you would be totally restored. It will be a touch of healing and deliverance. The moment I touch you, my cleanliness becomes your cleanliness. Why? And how this is possible? Because Jesus is the prophesied healing balm of Gilead. Jesus is Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord that healed thee. Our Lord Jesus came that we might have life and have it to its fullness or have it more abundantly. Our Lord is saying, I am he who was despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. I am he who had borne your grief. I have taken away your griefs and carried your sorrows away. I am he who was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your, our peace or your peace was upon him and he's saying by my stripes you were healed I took 49 stripes for you on the day of my crucifixion and no matter what disease or sickness 
might be ravished in your body. I took it and I nailed it to the cross that you might be well. And this is my New Year's message for you. How to walk in health and prosperity that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. It may be that you are on a bed or trying to get some rest or recover. You might be in the hospital or wherever you are. But if you are diseased or sick or in some way not being well or there is a family member who has not been well and you have prayed and prayed and you have wondered whether it is God's will for you or that person to recover, let me tell you in the affirmative, yes, it is God's will to heal you and make you well, for healing is the children's bread. But to receive the children's bread, you have to become a child of God. And in order to become a child of God, you must be born again. Marvel not that I say unto you, Jesus said, that is what is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. You need to have this experience in your life. It is a simple confession of faith. If we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, the Bible says, you shall be healed. Let me lead you in this prayer of conversion of turning your life over to become a child of God, not just a religious person, but a child of God. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me for my sins of omission and commission. Forgive me for my rebellious ways. Forgive me, Lord, from straying from the truth. O oh Lord, do not despise me in my days of weakness. Today I have heard the gospel and I believe that Jesus is Lord. I confess with my mouth that which I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Come into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and Savior and save me in Jesus' name. Wonderful if you have prayed that prayer. Do tell us about it by writing to us on the email provided there for you. Now let me pray for you. I know that we are distant and world apart, maybe. But I have prayed for many. And if even not only praying for many, I have prayed for my own sickness and disease. And God has delivered me out of many predicament. Believe God as I pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in agreement with that individual who is viewing this program, that woman or man, that sick person who has been agonizing in pain. You said, Lord, you give us power and authority over sickness and disease. And Lord, we have power to bind on and to loose. And I take this authority that you have given to me to bind the spirit of infirmity that is in that sister or brother's body, and to release them from it, to cast out that spirit of infirmity and say, enter no more, and to release them from a life of agony and difficulty to a life of happiness and wholeness. I pray for their release. I pray that they would have a testimony and a song to sing and they would have Lord, a good year ahead of them. They would walk in health and prosperity for 2021. Again, if you have prayed this prayer and you have believed God, please just take a little time and send a comment right to us. Remember, we are Missions Tabernacle of William and Waterleen Streets in Princess Town, Trinidad, West Indies. I am pleased that you could have joined me for this video cast. I am Anthony K. Walsing, and I am wishing you and your family a blessed and a prosperous 2021. May the wind of God be upon your back 
and uh, may the dew of heaven fall upon your heads. May the Lord prosper you, may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you in the name of Jesus. Walk in grace and success and prosperity in Jesus' name. Thank you.